Hey everybody, it's Sean Delaney from Delaney and Sons. Uh, hope uh, you guys are all staying safe. Uh, we're talking with Doug Turnbull of Turnbull Restorations this evening. And uh, he's uh, taking some time out of his busy day to tell us a little bit about his business. So uh, Doug, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me come on, Sean. So um, yeah. as the name implies, uh, Turnbull Restoration, I mean, the core of your business is the restoration of vintage firearms. Um, but uh, you know, before we talk really about what you do, I mean, how'd you get started in all this? Uh, mom and dad started a little retail uh, sporting goods shop, Creekside Gun Shop in Holcomb, New York, uh, back around 59. Uh, and it was started like most other businesses that uh, we, you talk to the people, that it, it was a hobby. Uh, he, he was uh, woodchuck hunting and and that and wanted to make some more money to to pay for his his stuff and one thing led to another uh, he was able to leave Taylor instruments and get into the retail uh, the sporting goods retail and they built it into probably the the largest specialty gun shop in the northeast um, and ran it for forty years uh, and I enjoyed the gunsmithing enjoyed watching. Uh, the guys uh, do the gunsmithing and, and the repairs and building stocks and uh, you know polishing and, and doing a lot of black oxide and upgrading guns to to resell and uh, enjoy that side more than the the retail side. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was interesting to see the different things over the years. Well, there's a lot of artistry involved in it for sure. So you know transitioning from that sort of how you got started i mean what are the various services that that you guys offer at uh, turnbull restoration uh it's pretty much a full uh full of, uh, we're, we're pretty much a, a full service restoration shop uh, we do restocking uh repairs of wood um refinishing recut checkering new checkering on the wood side we have a one-to-one -one pantograph and old don allen that we we use in house. Uh, and metal side, it's metal preparation, uh, rebuilding parts, re, uh, reshaping. Uh, we're doing some big welding, so rebuild stuff is, is needed. Uh, polishing, uh, both a little bit of machine, but a lot of hand polishing, filing, and uh, bringing the parts back to the same original condition and look is, is what they were originally, whether it's a a high polish pre-13 type finish or a you know 100 grit uh, you know coarse finish um, so that's yeah, kind of on the metal side um, then we get into you know the the rest of the metal is uh, we have an in-house engraver Tom McArdle who does lettering recutting engraving recut it's it's touching up the lettering uh, we also have about uh, 200 rolled eyes for the different manufacturers. So many times it's easier just to wipe off an address or a, a marking through the polishing and then just reapply the, the original marking back on. Uh, wow. It gives it the, the right look and everything. Um, you know, it, it's, it's attention to detail. You know, from there it's the metal finishes, uh, the color case hardening, the blown charcoal process, with glue of Damascus, or of, uh, uh, side by side barrels, uh, Winchester lever guns, bag tubes, uh, charcoal blowing, you know, Carbona blue, uh, which is a it's its own look in in finish. It is all black oxide, so you have to put the right metal prep on it to have it look right. The lettering has to look right. All the corners got to be square and sharp, and the holes have to be, you know, the way they were from the factory. Yeah, uh, and then at the end, it's putting the right finish on on the, the right part. Um, so it's it's pretty much a full service, uh, bringing a you know a, a gun from the 1880s, about 1940, back to its original look uh, and feel. Wow! Uh, it's specializing in the accurate recreation of metal finishes on period firearms. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I was uh, going through your website and. Uh, saw the the sort of the restoration story of the winchester 1886 you did for tom Selleck, and that was really cool because it was every single component of the gun was yeah. totally taken down restored refinished new stock 
I mean, it was really a cool story and the whole process and everything that you guys can do. And, and those type of builds, um, you know, you can, you can go and buy a, you know, a, an engraved, a highly finished gun, but you know, and these custom builds like, like Tom did, you know, he, he knew what he wanted. He, he wanted a takedown, this barrel length, you know, a bunch of these different configurations. Then it was sending him photos and saying, okay, which cheek piece do you want? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which engraving, you know, I want this page on this side and I want this part on this side of the gun. And, you know, this is the lettering I want in the bottom and this is what I want, you know, so it's, it gets into a, um, a it's a personal thing at that point. Yeah. Um, that they have all this, this time and energy into it and you just you, you take all this information and create this this finished product for them. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's personal it's a great guy to work with. A pretty, pretty great guy to work with. Um, but you everybody asked me about him. How he is on TV is how he is in life. And he just he's down to earth, just a a wonderful man. He's not acting. Yeah. <laughs> No, he's not acting. <laughs> it's real life, yeah. Um, so I know one of the big processes that you guys do is the color case hardening, which, you know, you read stories of the old English makers and there are different shops that did it different ways and they would guard their secrets and, you know, there'd be like goat urine in it and leather and bone. and yeah. and um, But you're pretty much the only guy who's doing it the traditional way here in the States, as far as I know of them. I know you can't tell us everything, but like, how does it work? Like, like how do you do the color case hardening process? Well, there's, there's a number of different processes for color case hardening. We use the bone charcoal process. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it was the old process that was used, you know, you know, by, by the Europeans and, and by the early American people. Uh, and it's you know bone charcoal heated. You you put the the parts in it, uh, cook it for a while, and uh, and quench it. And uh, and the end result is one you get the hardened surface from the carburizing, and then you get the the wonderful colors. Yeah. From there, it's understanding how to vary the process so you can do Parker colors on a Parker and Winchesters have their own color, and Elsie Smith have their own color. Um, oh. And it's getting to be able to do that, is, as well as doing it on a reproduct and a production type basis. So we did 2,500 pieces for uh, Marlin in the '94s for the Century Limited, and we did 500 pieces for uh, the Kentucky Bicentennials, and we did 20 years of coloring for U.S. firearms on uh, their, their single actions. Um, so it's it's one to be able to understand it, and it's under how do you do it on a larger scale. Gotcha. Um, as the war kind of came along, they went from the bone charcoal process, which is a slow, very slow process, to cyanide and and uh, and, and basically it's a salt bath. You know, you, you have a salt bath and and, uh, and it's very very quick. Um, and it wasn't the old colors; it's it's its own colors, its own look. It's you know, it's the H and R's, uh, yeah. the tiger stripe look. It's the marlin uh, or the, the um, the late Marlins had, uh, or uh, you know, some of those they had kind of more of the, the tiger stripe look, and it was a different look. Um, the foxes had, the late guns had a different look. Um, some of the Turkish guns too, I know you see that. And the, well, the, the Turkish guns, uh, European guns had all different looks. And it's, it's, I guess it's, how do you explain the difference is you put a turkey in the oven and that's like, charcoal, that bone charcoal coloring. You throw a turkey in and you cook it for 30 minutes a pound and you, or, or whatever, whatever that, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I yeah. don't cook turkeys. I don't have to worry about that. You throw a turkey in for three hours. Right. You know, it's in there and it's cooking and cooking and cooking and, it, and it's going on. And it's like, hey, wait a minute. Let's go get a deep fryer and throw the turkey in and it's done in five minutes, boom. That's the difference between bone charcoal and in the cyanide process. Gotcha. Whereas, um, it's speed, and you go from a, a two hour for a single gun as opposed to five minutes for a single gun. Oh, wow. How your production's up 
uh, you're not trying to duplicate colors, you're just trying to, you're creating a hardness, a surface hardness. So it's done for different reasons. Um, you know, Parker's original Parker, the bone shark ball, you get into the Remington guns, that Del Greco, that's, that was a cyanide process. Two different processes. They were known for, you know, Del Greco's had to look that way. If it didn't look that way, it wasn't right. Right. It, it, it's how it is. Yeah. No, that's interesting. Um, the other thing I know that you guys do a lot of is um, the bluing. And, you know, I just think of bluing as, and I brought a couple examples here. We got a pair of a uh, set of barrels here and you know, these are blue barrels and, blue and barrels, it's, yeah. they're, it's London bluing. They're, they're, they're nice barrels. They're actually, um, they're actually sleeved. So there's the bluing over the Damascus and the monoblock. Mm -hmm. but, so that's bluing. It's what I think of, but then you also, you know, on the same gun, you've got, you know, the screw, oh, the, the pin yeah. heads. Yeah. They, they're, blue. Yeah. They, they're, they're different and the, and the triggers are the same. Like that's blued as well, but yeah. they've got this blue sheen to them. So, I mean, what's, what's that? Like, what's the difference between the bluing techniques and do you use all of them and when do you use them? Yeah, we, we do use them all. Uh, back in the day, they, they would call um, doing you know, you know, shotgun barrels uh, and, and rifle barrels, you know, it's bluing, but they would call it browning because you would wipe on uh, a bluing solution, it would actually rust and turn brown. You boil it, it converts it from a fer the ferrous oxide, or it's it's one of it's one way or the other oxide, yeah. fer and it th turns it from a, a brown rust to a, a black oxide, black rust. Gotcha. And you put coat on after coat on, and you do it, uh, you know, six, eight, ten coats, and uh, then you got your finish. So that's rust bluing. Um, browning is basically the same, but you don't boil it. So it, it leaves it the, the brown color. Um, you see a lot of that in you know, some of the earlier uh, muzzleloaders in that are, are brown. Yeah. Um, and, and they would neutralize. Yeah, yeah. They would neutralize the finish and end up with a, a good protective. Uh, from there, there's charcoal, carbona blue in the process. Uh, it's a heat blue process. Uh, just about all the manufacturers used on their on their firearms, uh, Colts, Winchesters. Uh, it's a it's a heat process. Uh, it's a very durable, uh, again, slow process. Um, and again, you have to use that process for those parts to get the right look, to have a look right in the right. restoration. And right. you got the niter blue, which is a, a high, it's a saltpeter, a high temp blue, around 600 degrees. And that gives you kind of the spring blue. Uh, it's also used as a tempering blue, so you could harden the part and then throw it in your niter blue uh, bath and, and and draw it back to to get a hardness or a, a good spring on it. So a spring blue or, or niter blue. Uh, from there, it's a black oxide. You know, black oxide. Uh, it's what we see on all the modern guns. Again, it's you know you have charcoal bluing, color case hardening. You have you know, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> charcoal blue and black oxide, which is color case hardening to um, cyanide hardening. Gotcha. So it's, you know, it, it can take a couple hours to do a gun, or you can throw it in and be done in, you know, 20 minutes. Right. It's speed, and it's, it's a different finish, it's a different look. It's the right look for certain stuff, and it's the wrong look for things. So you can go to a restoration and do all these different processes, but color it with, you know, do a case starting with the wrong process or you throw it into bluing with the wrong process. And when you're all said and done, you got a pretty looking gun, but it's not done as a restoration because it doesn't have the right finish on the end. Right. So is there, is there any difference in durability between the processes? Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, we find that uh, the charcoal bluing is a, I think it's a very, very tough uh, finish, uh, more so than, than black oxide um, and probably rust bluing. It's, uh, it's almost like a carbon buildup. It, it's almost like it's slick on it. Um, and it's, it has its own look. And then there's the variations within that, you know, depending on the polish, uh, the, the degree of polish will have a different look. So uh, you look at it in cold 1911, 
you know, you got a, a 1912 gun, it's a real high polish, it's really deep, real lustrous blue. Yep. Then you get to a 1918, early 1918, because they did 375,000 1911s in 1918. So it's early guns, 1917, 1918. The polish kept getting coarser and coarser and coarser. That changes the blue look. And then you get into, you know, from about 375,000 and higher in the 1911s, uh, what they called uh, a Black Army. Um, and it was a changing of the process. It's its own look. And it's you can't do a black army on a on a 1912 gun because it won't look right or vice versa. Right. So it's it's changing the process, changing the polish uh, for the time period. So when it's done, it looks right. Yep. That makes yeah, sense. It's, it's yeah. It's it's all those little things that it's the details. I mean, it's just it's details. Um, it's like restoring an, an old Model T or or whatever. And if you you know you can put a nice modern polyurethane, uh, polyurethane finish, you know, and high gloss and, and great. It'll look great, but it just doesn't look great. It has to be black and painted on with a paintbrush. Right. It's, right. it's the same thing. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and you were saying how you, you've done runs. You said Marlin. I think you've done some stuff for Ruger. And so obviously you will work on new guns. Yeah, we do. Um, and and is, is that... I mean, something that's like, let's say I go and buy whatever. I go and buy a Marlin lever action so I could send the action to you or send the whole thing to you and you could redo it with a sort of a nicer finish, mm -hmm. basically? Yeah, uh, we, we do that. We do uh, finishes where you would you know, prepare the metal, send it to us, and, and we'll do all the metal, finish metal work. Uh, we do some with uh, the Henry uh, lever action rifles. We're working okay. with the company and we're, we're doing... Henry sends us the parts, we call them, we send them back, they assemble them, and off to uh, Top Shot Armory. Um, we've done that the Merlin run. Uh, we've done you know, runs for Colt and their, and their single actions, their 1917, uh, yeah. uh, 1911 that we did. Uh, worked with Remington on their, uh, the rolling block process. Uh, we did the uh, Remington UMC, 830 tons, uh, which we built, marked, and finished for them. Wow. Uh, worked for just about all the manufacturers over the years uh, in different in different stages, whether it's a, a few pieces for them or, or getting into a, a full uh, you know, full run of, of sorts. Um, I think the biggest run we've done was uh, I think it was about 2,500 pieces for for Mar Marlin with their 94th Century Limited. Yep. Um, we the Lou Horton the Heritage Special uh, the Smith and Wessons we it was a couple thousand pieces there that we did. Yep. Uh, you learn a lot doing those runs. You learn about the different metallurgical issues you have. Um, we did learn a bunch of stuff with the Smith & Wesson on how to deal with different, uh, the different alloys throughout yeah, the guns. Well. And the new new modern seals, you have to treat differently than the older seals too. So For sure. It's, it's a learning curve. It's fun. Um, it's it's interesting working with the engineers and that uh, when you do the do the runs, but uh, it's fun. Yeah, I've always thought the uh, the uh, Ruger Red Label would look good with color case hardening. Yeah, we've we've done a number of those guns, uh, and you do they turn out very well. Yeah, uh, the Ruger Number Ones. Uh, we're doing the Ruger Mark IV, the little uh, semi-automatic, uh, and uh, through the barrel and, and action is is one whole piece and. Uh, they, they look really neat. Um, the Browning Lever Action 22 is BL-22. Um, yep. 1886 is uh, Navy Arms uh, in the, uh, the Cody Museum on a, on a Winchester 73 uh, run that they did. Oh, nice. uh, yeah. Um, we've, we've built up some neat stuff. i raised a lot of money over the years. Uh, there was the, uh, in 19, yes. 2013, um, for the SHOT Show, we, we built up an AR-10 that we had made out of steel. Um, wow. 308, uh, it had uh, about 50 inches of gold inlay engraving. Uh, then Sandy Hook happened in, in December, which was a, a sad thing. And, and uh, we're thinking, well, this, this isn't the greatest thing to be uh, using and, and selling and auctioning off for the Hunting Heritage, uh, but it sold for $134,000. Oh, wow. uh, 
Yeah, it takes two people. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, exactly. sold, yeah, sold for 134000 We get a whole lot of money. Uh, Good. So, yeah, we've got, I think we've, I've kind of gone through and tried to figure out how much have we raised over the years uh, through our work, and it's, you know, it's probably a million dollars. That's great. Um, tried to figure out how many firearms and, and actions we've had through. It's, I'm sure it's over 100,000. It has to uh, be. Cases. Um, so it's, you know, we've, we've seen some neat stuff over the years, uh, good and bad. Yeah. You know, some train wrecks, but, you know, it's this business. And you figure out how to, how to straighten them out and, and uh, make them right. That's great. Well, um, I really appreciate the time. This has been really interesting. Uh, anyone who wants to go and check out uh, the website, obviously, it's TurnbullRestoration.com. Um, if you got an old gun that you want to have revived, a new gun you want to look like it should, um, give Doug a call. So thanks a lot for your time. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank <laughs> you.